Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here this morning. We had an awesome time with the ladies this weekend. How many, how many women were able to be here this weekend for the conference? Good to see you. You obeyed your pastor and you were at church today. Well done. If you missed it this year, make sure you plan to be a part of it next year because it was amazing. It was a lot of fun and um, we just had a good time. I don't know about you guys, but this morning was crazy walking out into the weather. I was, I was caught off guard. I was not expecting this. And we were waiting to go outside, and I tried to open the door, and I couldn't get it open, so my husband went and got it, and as I was standing there waiting for him to pull around the car, this couple came down, you know, looking all cute, and they were about to go out for the day, I'm assuming, and they opened the door and said, nope, and just turned back around, (laughs) walked straight back into the hotel. So I'm proud of you that you made it this morning. And that you're here at church, and you weathered the weather, and um, I believe God's going to do something special this morning in the service, and already, what an incredible sense of God's presence, and I hope you guys know, and I know I said this to the ladies, but I'm going to say it this morning too, but I hope you guys know how blessed you are to have a church like this with worship like this that's just amazing with pastors like Pastor Richie and Pastor Pam. They are amazing, amazing people. And you know, we get a little bit of an opportunity to connect with quite a few pastors um, with what we do and travel a little bit and they um, they really are the real deal. And I don't just say that lightheartedly. They really, they love you. They love God. They're authentic. They're real people. And so we, we honor you and thank you for having, having us today. And I brought my husband with me and um, <clears throat> he is the love of my life. He is a mess. Um, and I love that mess. Um, but I'm glad he was able to come with me. And, uh, we actually just got done this past week with our first week of summer camp. So your, your students actually come and attend your youth attend our summer camp every year. And we love having them. And we have, um, about Uh, 5,500 students that come through the summer, and we have six weeks of camp going on. So we just had our first week, 148 salvations. So it was an awesome week. And um, so we're recovering, so it's just nice to be out of the smell and aroma (laughs) of a thousand teenagers (laughs) and be in the the much better smelling um, atmosphere that we have today. So um, this morning, I'm going to I'm going to talk to you uh, just on a topic that I actually think um, God just God just kind of orchestrates it a little bit. But after hearing what Pastor Richie has been speaking about for the past little bit and then this weekend, man, it was so good. I talked about Friday night just to have a cultivating a heart of gratitude. So women, I hope your 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 or men, I hope your women came back, your your wives and your daughters, and they acted a little more grateful and thankful towards you. And then uh, Pastor Pam brought an awesome message yesterday morning on just dream again. And I think that this kind of just will go along with that. Um, I want to talk about on the topic: Can you hear my prayer? Can you hear my prayer? And just going off even after, after the worship, what Pastor Richie said, uh, there are times and seasons in our life that we think, God, can you hear my prayer? But I believe and we know, looking through the scripture, and we know in our lives that God is in the answering prayer business. God is in the miracle working business. God is in the business of dealing and giving hope in the most hopeless situations. That is who God is. And you know, this Bible is given to us as promises and testimonies that we can encourage ourselves with and be reminded this is who God is. And if he did it for them, he can do it for me. And, and that is how good God is. That is, man, I'm so thankful that I serve God. I'm so thankful that I am a Christian, that I follow him. He is so faithful. But the truth is, all of us have found ourselves in situations, whether you're a new Christian or you've been a Christian all your life, you were born in the church building or whatever it may be, 
that we think, God, are you listening? Can you hear my prayer? Can you hear my cry? And I want to look at a story this morning of a couple of ladies that I, were in that exact situation. And maybe you've heard this story, but it's a story about Mary and Martha. And Mary and Martha are the sisters of a man named Lazarus. And here they are. They serve Jesus. They love Jesus. They're close with Jesus. They followed Jesus. They supported him. They were faithful to him. And here they are. <clears throat> excuse me, morning voice. Here they are in a situation that their brother, Lazarus, becomes deathly ill. And so what do they do naturally they cry out to Jesus. They send word to Jesus, God, we know if you come that he will be healed. We need you. We need you to show up. We need you to come. We need you to be here because Lazarus is sick to the point of death. And so we're going to pick up in verse John 11, verse 21. And Jesus is now returning to, he got word of Mary and Martha, and, and he's returning to where they are to see Lazarus. But at this point, Lazarus has already died. And Jesus knows that Lazarus has already died. And he had actually been dead four days already. So John 11, starting with verse 21, Martha runs out to meet Jesus. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord... If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Bless you. Whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He asked Martha. She said to him, yes, Lord. Believe, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. God, who was coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary quickly rise and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, cannot he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? That right there is a question we've asked before. Not the exact question, but the question. Then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. What an amazing story in the Bible. 
And today, I just want to take a few minutes and dive into this passage and, and really try to get a few just even practical thoughts for us, that when we're in situations like Mary and Martha, and maybe it's not we're praying for someone's life, but maybe it's we're praying for breakthrough. We're praying for something in a relationship, believing God, and we found ourselves God, saying, God, could you not show up? <laughs> Could you not help? Can you hear me? Can you, are you there for me? Where are you? What's happening? So we're going to look at that this morning. Let's pray real quick before we start, dive in. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. And God, even hearing this story, that we are so encouraged. I thank you that you encourage people this morning. That whatever they may be facing and walking through, that you are here right now present with them, and you are leaning into them just as we are leaning into you. And Lord, I thank you more than anything I have to say. It's what you have to say. And so Holy Spirit, speak to each and every person right where they are, individually, what they're facing and what they're going through. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So looking at this story of Mary and Martha... There are a few things that I see clearly, and there are really quite a few things that you can draw from this passage, but I want to talk about just a few things this morning that we can learn when we cry out to God, what we can expect. Number one, God hears your prayers. Not sometimes, not when you're on your best behavior. Not when all sin is clear and, you know, things are perfect. God always hears your cry. He always hears your prayer. Psalm 66, 19 says, but God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Psalm 6, 9 says, the Lord heard my plea. The Lord will answer my prayer. And I love this story because the truth is Mary and Martha sent word to God, sent word to Jesus, and he responded. And so we need to know in our life that the Bible says that if we ask, if we seek, if we knock, we will find. And so when we go to God, he hears our prayer. He hears you. He hears you in your darkest moments. He hears you in the hardest moments. He hears you in the best moments. He hears and sees and acknowledges. He hears your cry and your prayer. I want to ask this this morning because I've found in, in being a pastor and in church my whole life, but are you praying to God? Are you going to God about the issues in your life. Because the truth is, there are far more believers in the body of Christ that don't really go to God about what they're facing. They don't go to God about their dreams and their hurts and their issues and their, their anxieties and their worry. They just say, oh, you know, it's just life. Oh, you know, it's just whatever. This is just my lot in life. This is just what I'm going to have to bear. This is just, I've just gotten used to this, and I just take pills for this, and I just have become accustomed, and there's nothing wrong with that. But don't stop going to God and praying to Him, because ultimately, He is the answer. And so when you pray, God hears every time. You know, I heard, um, I actually read this theologian writing about our prayers and when we go to God and answered prayers and what happens. And, you know, he talks about, and, you know, I thought this was such a good example and a good, a good thought. But he talks about when we go to God with our prayers, God cannot not answer them. Because he is more, he is faithfulness. He is truth. If it says it in his word, he promises it. So it happens. But here's what we don't realize and don't always think about is that God lives outside of time. Talks about he's omnipresent, omniscient, you know, all those things. And so he lives outside of time. The moment we pray, he answers and he puts the answer in the right spot in time. For us as Americans and as people, we expect when we pray 
The next day or in 20 minutes, I'm like, God, where are you? What's happened? I prayed yesterday. Where's, you know, this breakthrough I've been waiting for? Okay, I've been praying for 20 minutes. I've been praying for this. I need an answer, Lord. Where are you? Show up. Okay, I'm giving you to tomorrow at noon. And if it's not there, then I'm going to be wondering. But the truth is the answer is there. It's been given. It's been answered because that's who God is. It's just in his time. And it's in his, his span of time, which in his time is even into eternity. And, and I mean, it really is. God is always answering us. His prayers, he is so true. Go to God about your issues. Go to God about your desires. Go to God with your relationships and your jobs and your heartache and your dream and your, ans- and your callings. All those things. Go to God first. Number two, what I see from this passage is your prayer may require some obedience. You may pray and God may ask you to do something. Verse 39, Jesus tells Martha, roll the stone aside, Jesus told her. But Martha protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Here's Martha with all of her friends and all of her relationships standing around, and Jesus is telling her to do something crazy. (laughs) He's asking her to do something. And a lot of times when we go to prayer to God about something, God responds by asking us to do something. And sometimes it may even seem unrelated. Sometimes it may seem absurd. Sometimes it may seem out there. But but Lazarus would have never left the grave had Martha not been obedient to roll the stone away. And so for some of us today, what is God asking you to do? What is the last thing God has encouraged you to do? What is the last thing God's put on your heart? You know, I remember a time in my life um, that I was in real need of relationships and friendships. For I was in a just I was in my high school kind of college years, and I I remember just feeling so isolated, so alone. I had had uh, some friends that I had kind of a falling out with, and at that point, I was just needing relationship and so desperate and just so lonely for relationship. And I remember talking to my parents and talking to my leaders about it and just, you know, every time I came to church, it just felt like I was alone. And and, and I, I really did. I was feeling so isolated and so lonely. And one of my leaders came up to me and said, hey, Natalie, you see that girl over there? She's going through a really hard time. I, I think you should, I think you should go and just kind of be a friend to her right now. I didn't know her. She was a couple years older than me. I was like, I don't know her. I don't think we'd get along. We didn't seem like we had a lot of the same interests or same personality or whatever it may be. But I felt like God was like, you need to be obedient. You need to do it. And here I had been for months now, six, eight months saying, I'm so lonely and so whatever. And in that moment, I had no clue what this relationship was going to bring. But for me, it was just a choice of obedience. I wasn't doing it for me. I was doing it for that poor girl that the leader told me to go help. (laughs) I was like, okay, I'll go talk to this poor girl, whatever. And, you know, she would, I don't think she'll want to be friends with me. It ended up being a lifelong relationship that God brought into path. But you know what? It never would have happened had I not been obedient to listen to God. Sometimes we don't even put the two together. How many stories in the Bible that when people come to God and say, God, help with this, I need this, that he gives them small or big or crazy things to do. And in their obedience, they then see the victory. They then see what's on the other side of that obedience. In the Bible, he tells a man that has leprosy all over him to go into a disgusting lake and bathe seven times. Just like, why would I get grosser when I am already needing this? But he was obedient. You know, in times of war, how many times does he tell them, hey, go in and march around that wall seven times. On the last time, shout really loud. 
and then we'll see what happens. I'm sure in their mind they're thinking, okay, after I do that, then I'm really going to have to fight. Then I'm really going to have to figure out how I'm going to get victory. But no, all they had to do was be obedient. And God fought the battle for them. God won the victory for them. What is, under, what is on the other side that could bring your answered prayer? You know, um, 10 years ago or so, uh, my pastor and then my brother, who is now my pastor actually, um, asked me to lead a small group. And I am an introverted person by nature. And the idea of sitting around with 12 to 20 people and sharing my feelings might be my worst nightmare. <laughs> and, and so he asked me, he's like, I really think you're supposed to lead a young adult small group. I, you know, here, I think you should do it. And honestly, I said no. I said no multiple times. But I'd already known God had kind of told me in my heart when they'd start talking about it, that's something I should do. It kind of fluttered a little bit. And I was like, oh, I feel like I should do this, but gosh, I hate small groups. I hate the, the whole idea of small groups, the whole whatever. So finally I gave in and I did it and honestly was really, really pushed to do it. And, and so we do this small group. About six months into the small group, in walks this really, really buff baseball player. <laughs> and here I am, 27 years old at the time, and my biggest prayer to God right then was, I'm single, and when are you ever going to bring a man into my life? When is that? And, you know, I don't know how it is here in Texas, but in Oklahoma, people get married at, like, 19 years old. When you hit 22, you're like, girl, you're too picky. So for, for me, 27, I'm single. I was like, people just were like, oh, honey, you let me set you up with someone. And it's just a sad thing. But for me... So in walks this very large, buff baseball player, very loud baseball player, into our small group because he happened to know someone in a small group. And after months of hanging out with him and all that stuff, it, was, it ended up being the man of my dreams. But if I wouldn't have been obedient to lead that small group, who knows if I would have met that promise, you are a promise, baby, that promise that I had been believing God for for years. Who knows what's on the other side of the obedience to God that he's leading you to do? <laughs> oh, you should ask God today. You should pray. Stop and ask God. What are you wanting, what, are, what have you put in my heart? And honestly, some of you right now, you already know God's been dealing with you. What's the latest thing that God's been encouraging you to do to be obedient about that you just have not done because you just never know? Number three, your answered prayer may look different than what you expected. Your answered prayer may look different than what expected. You know, we can get so fixed on how we think things are going to work out and how we think things should happen and how we think that promise should be packaged that if we're not careful, we can miss the miracles that are happening in our life. We can miss what God is doing. And we have to be careful of this because there is a good thing of having this expect, uh, expectation we want to put our expectation out there. We want to trust God. But I've kind of realized in life that there is a difference between our expectation and expectancy. That when we have this heart of expectancy in God, that, God, we're expecting you to move. We're expecting without the limitations of our expectations of how it should happen and how it should look and when it should happen and what it should be packaged like and it should be blonde hair and blue-eyed and whatever. You know, we get crazy sometimes with our expectations, don't allow your expectations to create limitations on what God can bring into your life. And so sometimes it's a little different than what we expected, but that's okay because it's always better than what we expected. Can I just say the timing may be different than what you wanted or expected. God's delays are not God's denials. 
God's delays are not God's denials, but it is all in his timing. We think that for it to be a miracle, and if God really loves us, it'll happen when we want it to happen. But sometimes delays bring even greater blessings. The person I would have chosen to marry when I was 22 is not who I should have been with, married, and it would not have brought the same fruit to my life that what Chandler has brought to my life. And truthfully, he's four years younger than me, so I had to wait till he became a grown person, <laughs> that he grew a, grew a brain. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't have liked him if I would have met him four years earlier. He needed to mature. Sometimes the delays are for a purpose. That's a greater blessing. And here Mary and Martha found themselves going, God, you're, you're, you're four days too late. You're four days too late. He's passed away. You didn't show up when we thought you needed to show up. You didn't show up when you needed to show up. You didn't do your job. You're too late. I'm too late to do this. It's past my prime. I'm too late for this miracle to happen. It's way too far gone for that son or that daughter to come back to you. It's way too far gone for something to be restored in my marriage. But God's delays are not his denials. His timing is perfect. <laughs> he is so good. If he can show up on the scene and bring a dead man back to life. Four days too late, he can do anything. He can do anything in your life. You know, um, Jesus gave them a promise to encourage them while they waited. You look back in verse, verse three and four, earlier in the passage when the man came to tell him, listen, Lazarus is sick, come out and help him. This is what Jesus told that person to give encouragement to them. So the sisters sent him to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the son of God may be glorified through it. Jesus has left you with promises and encouragement encouragement that you can hold on to. Do not let go of the promises that God has given you. Even if they were five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, do not let anything steal that promise from you. God gave it to you as an anchor to, for hope to anchor your soul. Hold on to those promises. <laughs> I'm losing track, guys. Sorry, I'm getting so into it. <laughs> oh, he brings answers that may look different than what you thought. Jesus could have said the word and he would have been healed, but it was different than what he thought. It looked different than what he thought. The Bible is full of so many stories that ended up looking different than what he thought. You know, Joshua in the Bible w witnessed Moses parting the Red Sea and how it happened. But when Joshua came to a, a, a waterbed, when he came to the Jordan, that's not how it happened. God didn't part it immediately. He said, no, 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 go out in there. Walk halfway through. And then you part sometimes. It just looks different every single time. And if we aren't careful, we will put our parameters around it. Ephesians 3.20 says, now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far above all that we dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or dreams. There is always something more than what our mind can comprehend. There is always something more than what our mind can comprehend in that moment when we're believing God for the miraculous. There always is. You know, for us, you know, many of you may know a little bit of our story. We were here a few years ago before I was pregnant and shared it with you guys. But it took us a long journey to get pregnant. We ended up having to go through fertility treatments and miscarried twice, and it was a hard, hard, it was a five-year journey for us. And, you know, there were so many times that I thought, God... Why didn't you just 
you know, do what you do and get me pregnant. Why didn't I just end up pregnant? But it's not how it ended up. But the miracle still came. And her name is Vivian Pearl Boyce, and she's two and a half years old and a mess and beautiful at it. But sometimes it doesn't look like, it doesn't happen the way. I wish it wouldn't have had to happen with lots of shots and treatments and whatever, but I was obedient to God to do what I felt like we felt like we were supposed to do, and his promise still came. You know, in the Bible, one of the biggest things that I think expectation <laughs> hindered the miracle is this is exactly what happened to the Jews in the Bible. They had an expectation of how their promise, their king, their Lord, and their Messiah would come. And they ended up totally missing the Messiah coming to earth. They missed Jesus. They missed the promise. They missed the miracle. All because they were so wrapped up in the expectations of what they had built in their mind. Of what he would look like. Lay down your expectations and build up your expectancy. And say, God, I know you're going to come through. You lead me. You guide me. You tell me whatever it is I need to do. But I know you're going to come through, and I don't even care how, how it looks. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it, what it seems like. I don't care what it is. And you know what the truth is? It always is better than what we expected or imagined or dreamed. <laughs> Lastly, number four. Your prayer is tied to purpose. Your prayer is tied to purpose. We just read this in verse 4, but I want to read it again. But when Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Everything that we face, every trial, every hurt, every time that we stand and we believe God and we stretch out our faith and we need God to come in and rescue us and come in and heal us and come in and help us, every time it is that he comes through and he is faithful every single time, it is for a greater purpose. It is for his glory. It is for his praise. It is for his kingdom and his purpose every single time. That's why there's so much strength and power in sharing what God has done in you and what God is doing in you. But you need to know this, and I think that this brings hope a little bit, that the hardest things that you're facing right now in your life, and it may seem like a journey, for us, the hardest thing so far that we've faced is believing God for a child. And, and right now we're facing it again. We're believing God again for a child and having even crazier circumstances thrown our way. But the truth is, every time God will bring glory if you let him. God will use it. He'll use it. He'll use your worst He'll use your ugliest. He'll use your most difficult. And he will bring, he will, it will give him glory and bring people closer to him. I can't count how many people that just because we were able to share our story and our journey. And honestly, we started sharing it even before we saw the miracle. Because I knew the miracle was coming. I knew it was coming, but truthfully, if it took 10 years, if it took 15 years, if God brought it in a totally different way, whatever it took, I knew I still trusted him. And I knew that my story and my trial, that if I can encourage someone else, anyone else, that it brings purpose. It brings purpose to the things we're facing. And whatever you're facing, God, it says in his word that he works out everything for good and for his glory. Even the things that were enemy sent and enemy, you know, the enemy meant for evil in your life. God says, oh, hold on, hold on, it's okay. Even the stupid things that we do to ourselves and the mistakes that we make. God says, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We can work this out and it'll bring even greater glory 
It'll bring even greater glory. And every time we give glory and lift up the name of Jesus, people are drawn to Jesus. People find the answer. People find hope. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, we thank you right now that you are our hope, you are our answer. And Lord, I pray anybody that's in a situation right now that is crying out to you, that is pleading, God, hear me, that they would be encouraged in this moment, that God, you are with them, that you are, you are listening, that you are answering their prayer, that God, you are going to use this darkest moment for glory. You're going to use it, Lord, that something better is even on the way. God, I thank you. You give hope in this moment. Right now, with every head bowed and eyes closed, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, Jesus is our hope. Jesus is the answer. And if you're feeling hopeless without Jesus, I can understand why. He is the one who brings hope. He is the one who brings healing. He is the one who brings joy. And right now, no matter what your life looks like, no matter what you're going through, no matter how you may feel like, I don't know, I do this, I've done this, He doesn't care. He loves you. That's why you're here today. And if you're sitting here in this room and you say, you know what? I need a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe at some point you did have a relationship with Jesus, but you know you're not right with God. You know that your heart is not where it should be and your life is not where it should be and you just want to get your heart right with God. If that's you this morning, I want to pray right where you're sitting. I'm not going to ask you to come forward or embarrass you in any way. I'm going to ask you just to lift up your hand to show me and show God I want to make this decision this morning. And we're going to pray right where you are. If that's you this morning on the count of three, you want to, for the first time, give your life to Jesus or, or maybe rededicate your, your life to God. If that's you today, I want to ask you on the count of three to lift up your hand. One, two, three. Awesome. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else this morning, you can lift it up and put it right back down. But you say, I want to make that decision today. Awesome. Well, let's do this church. If you can join in with a few people that have lifted their hands and we're going to pray together. And the Bible says when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that you are saved. And so let's pray together. If you can just repeat after me this morning, everyone say, Jesus, I ask you into my heart. I ask you into my life. My life. Save, me. Save me. Heal me. Heal me. Change me. Change me. From this day forward. From this day forward. I am. I am a follower of Christ. A follower of Christ. I love you. I love you. And I thank you. And I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, let's Amen. give God thanks.